interpretation. It's the magic that makes music come alive. It's every performer's own secret sauce that's unique to them. Sometimes interpretation can make us fall in love with a particular piece of music. Sometimes it can turn us off to a performer entirely. And sometimes a performance just leaves us feeling blah, just indifferent. Whether you enjoy or you don't enjoy the musical outcome, every great performer has many reasons why they make the musical choices that they make in a particular piece. Today we're going to dive into and compare two extremely different interpretations of Chopin's Nocturne in C-sharp minor, opus 27, number one. We'll listen to Maurizio Pollini's 2005 recording and Bruce Liu's live performance from the International Chopin Piano Competition in 2021, where he won first prize. Let's start with Pollini. Pellini opens playing in one of the quickest tempi that I've heard taken for this nocturne. His half note is near 36 beats per minute on average. Ironically, even though this is one of the quickest recordings that I'm aware of, it's still considerably slower than the half note equals 42 that Chopin himself marked for this piece. This choice of tempo highlights the undulating texture in the left hand. The notes come quickly enough that it almost begins to sound like large waves on the ocean. This tempo choice also makes the melody more song-like, more straightforward. To my ears, it almost begins to make the melody sound as if it's being sung by a bard, telling an adventure to people sitting around a pub with a pint. What for it's a less serious approach to the melody, and that less serious melodic performance juxtaposes against the key and the pedal tone that Chopin has written the harmonic changes across, and these ocean waves that the left hand provides against this dark and cloudy backdrop. Now let's listen to how Bruce Liu interprets this opening.
In terms of a direct tempo comparison, Liu plays around half note equals 24, which is so slow it's almost uncountable that way. It's more easily heard as quarter equals 48. Now this is considerably slower than Polini, and it's one of the slowest tempi that I've heard for this nocturne. In making this choice, Liu is shifting the nature of the texture the left hand is providing. It's no longer waves on an ocean, but it's, it's more like the tiniest ripples on an otherwise hauntingly still lake on the darkest of nights. Instead of undulating and drawing some of our attention, the left hand is purely painting a texture that the right hand can sing over. And as that right hand sings, it's much more like an operatic soprano dramatically mourning the loss of love. Rather than Polini's bard singing in a pub. Liu's use of slower tempo also allows him some extra push in his rubato when he wants to exaggerate the emotion of a phrase, much like he does beginning in measure 11. Let's listen to Polini's Piumoso, starting in measure 29. Polini kicks us into our new tempo quickly, right in the first measure. The, the angst and the anger and uh, almost, I'd say, violent grief that Chopin has written in these notes is only thinly veiled in measure 29 and no longer veiled at all in measure 37. The transition away from C sharp minor and into A flat major is actually played by Polini with slightly less dynamic and less passion. Instead of it being an arrival to a new emotional plane, Polini has obscured it slightly, saying, this isn't the joyous moment that you thought was coming. Leaving this brief consonant moment that we have in A flat, the agitato begins once again thinly veiled, reminiscent of how Polini opened the Piumoso, and it crescendos into the mazurka like con anima a few bars later. Taken as a whole, Polini mostly maintains a sense of I'd say emotional distance from all but measures 37 through about 45. This section as a whole, he plays balanced. He provides a little bit of deception and the mazurka isn't too joyful or too rowdy, but more like the dance of a person angry in heartbreak. Now let's hear Liu's interpretation of the Pimoso.
Immediately we notice there is no immediate difference in tempo from the opening theme. Instead, Liu is slowly transforming the emotion from dark and foreboding and mysterious into passion. And he doesn't allow the music to reach its full transformation until measure 45, where Chopin is marked appassionato. Then he strikingly slows down the beginning of the agitato section. This allows, just like in his opening of the piece, the melody to be the driving movement forward and not the left hand. Instead of feeling agitato by the harmony or by the offset changes in harmony between beat one and the second triplet of beat one in some measures, or by the constant pounding of the reiterated notes in the left hand, no, Liu instead focuses us on the melody and on the repeated notes in the right hand. So now instead of sounding furious, this is now more of a, a desperate cry for help that continues to cry out louder and louder. Moving forward, Liu puts a somewhat, I'd say, startling break between the agitato and the mazurka that begins in 65 and very much exaggerates the dance-like movement present over the next few measures. The octave passage that finishes this middle section brings back the fury we heard around our 40. Now, as a whole, Liu has taken us on quite a wild ride, almost through the thoughts of, I'd say, a slightly deranged person. At one moment, terrified. Another moment, shaking their fist. Another moment, crying out for help. And yet another, reveling in a brief moment of happiness amidst all of the gloom. Be sure and listen to how both performers end the piece. I've left links to both in the description below. Do you have a favorite of the two? Probably yes. I know I definitely do. But in either case, the interpretation that speaks most to you doesn't take away from the masterful work of the other pianist. I almost forgot to mention, Polini's recording clocks in at 4 minutes and 13 seconds. Liu's is nearly a minute and a half longer at 5 minutes and 40 seconds. Which one do you prefer? Let us know in the comments below. I'm Charles Stepanek, and you've been watching Pianist Academy, where we practice smarter, not harder. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you next time.